Steve here. Hey, Lars. And welcome back to Going In Raw News Brief. We're going to try to keep this brief today, but we got quite a bit of news, Larson. We what's do. What's going on? On you mean what's in the news? In the news. What's in the news? So ratings are in for blood and guts. Guess how it did, Steve? Uh tanked. Two hundred thousand. Huge will numbers do tonight. What, what, what? Huge numbers. For all, numbers. Did you say impact will do better tonight? <laughs> Huge numbers. Uh the show scored one point zero nine million viewers and a point four two in the all important, really the only number that matters. Point four two in the all important eighteen to forty nine demo. That's the number one, number one. spot for cable te- to all the cable television last night. Huge numbers for AEW. Uh, so uh, good. You know, I the the first week they're unopposed. Uh, they got like a one point two. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it's a bit down from that. You can't really quibble with the eighteen to forty nine demo number though. That's really good. It's a really good number for them. They've been promoting this for a very long time now, and uh, and yeah, it seems to have paid off. Well done, A W. Well uh, done. In fact, it's a, a whole a tenth of a point higher than the the number two show for the night, which was the challenge on MTV. I scored a point. Whoa! Wait two. a second. Are you telling me that there is a show on MTV that isn't ridiculousness? Uh huh. Hmm. Um, it dude. might be the only one that's not. I don't think about. It. Oh, okay. So they have a second show now. <laughs> okay. I don't know if they feature that show for the entirety of a day. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like they do ridiculousness. Like yeah. All and then at eight thirty, it's the challenge. The challenge. Anyways, talk about a challenge. Impact. Uh, hopefully, won't have much of a challenge in re-signing Mister Impact Wrestling. Uh, Moose has confirmed that his contract does have an end date, and he has uh, confirmed that what it is. So we've assumed, we've assumed here at Going In Raw, now that we're Impact experts, that he is going to be the one, Moose, to defeat Kenny Omega for the Impact title at some point, probably this year. But it seems that uh, time might be running out for Mr. Impact Wrestling. He tweeted this out, quote, my goal is to win, my goal is to win the Impact Wrestling world title before my contract is up in June. That's how I imagine he typed it out. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Impact, of course, is in the process of filling out the field for a six-man bout at Under Siege, starring Stephen Go- Seagal, to determine Omega's Casey next opponent. And yeah, as Casey Ryback, to determine Omega's next opponent for the Impact title, one would assume assume that title defense would happen at Slammiversary in July. So you know, I, if my concept of time is is accurate, July is after June. Yeah, that I can confirm that one. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, if Moose uh, is to win this match at Under Siege, which is in a couple weeks, I think. I think it's on the 15th or something like that. Um, And get the shot against Omega. If he wants to achieve his goal here of getting that title before his contract is up, time's a ticket, you Mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So it's not going to wait till Slammiversary. But I feel like that's a a match. Moose versus Kenny, that's a pay-per-view match. You could sell a lot of pay-per-views with that match headlining your show. Yeah, they're so, yeah, yeah. So, their uh, their last pay per view um, did huge numbers. Did big numbers. Did really big numbers. So they got a good thing going here. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't know that Kenny's going to lose that Impact title. Maybe I don't know. But if hey, if it ends up being Moose versus Kenny at Slam Reversary, just one more reason for us to board that plane. <laughs> I looked up the. It's all, dude. It's only thirty two hours. A 32-hour drive from here to Nashville. I don't want to be in a car for 32 hours. Are you saying you don't want to be in a car for 32 hours? You don't want to be in a car for with 32 hours with I me? I said what I said. With me. I said what I said. I don't want to be in a car <laughs> okay. for 32 hours. <laughs> At all. <laughs> all right. Anyways, to be uh, to be continued. Uh, now, of course, yesterday uh, or two days ago, the big, big news was Daniel Bryan, of course, uh, uh, us finding out, Fightful, Select, Confirmed. His contract had expired. So we got some follow-up for that. Dave yeah. Meltzer, the Wrestling Observer himself, also read Fightful Select. And he confirmed <laughs> that he is indeed a free agent and that his deal with WWE expired this past Friday. And uh, he said the company is, quote, pushing hard for him to sign a new deal. I could have told you that. 
Yeah, I mean, the company, of course, would push hard for Daniel Bryan to sign a new deal because he's a needle mover. Yeah, if he totally. Would go elsewhere. God, of course he is. Of he's course, a massive him. needle mover. If he went elsewhere, so of course they're going to push hard to to get him signed a new deal. In news uh, that I could have told you, <laughs> of course WWE's trying to get him to sign a new deal. I know, of course they are, but it remains to be seen. Uh, what's next for Daniel Bryan? Bryan Danielson, what he's going to do, where he's going to go. Uh, you know, and I, I, I would be surprised if he's any in any real hurry. Uh, he's made it pretty clear he wants to spend more time with his family while still wrestling when he wants to. So when he decides he wants to wrestle again, I'm sure we'll hear uh, what he has in store for himself. How old, do we know? How old is his oldest kid? Three, four, four. I thought I read something an article about him recently where four. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Could be wrong. A lot of energy at four years old. And then he's got a second one. He'll mm-hmm. be back pretty soon. Anyways, <laughs> talking about Anyways. WWE and deals. Let's talk about the WWE MLW deal. Yeah. What's going so, on with that? So uh Court Bauer, CEO of MLW, recently interviewed by Post Wrestling and of course asked about the rumored talks between his promotion, WWE. And this is what he had to say. These transcripts are from Fightful. Uh court said quote i'm not going to comment on that stuff but it's an interesting time in the world there are a lot of things that haven't been done since maybe the 70s with interpromotional matches and stuff we of course would be intrigued by it but you have to look and see what's the long-term strategy does it align with your goals does it align with their goals does it serve the fans company and talents the best of its ability or is it just a quick transactional thing and you're just looking for the clout and headlines for me i look at this and go i'm not even done with my media rights deals I know the evaluation of my company is only going to go up. I am not interested in selling. Mm. I'm not having any conversations about selling. That's step one strategically. How does it mesh? What's the upside and downside? That's the stuff you evaluate. And if so, you move forward. It sounds like a conversation in that movie JFK when they're talking about all the different, well, black is white. White is black. Through the looking glass. Through Uh, the looking glass, people. He continues, if not, the conversation disqualifies itself. You go in a different direction. Oh, wow. We've had these conversations with other folks, and we've had them with a lot of people. So you'll find it works better, and it's maybe an hour later conversation. Right now in wrestling, everything is fluid. The biggest goal I have right now is how do I maximize awareness for the company so that we're not the best-kept secret in the game anymore? We know other promoters watch us and try to take our talent and ideas how do we get fans on a larger scale to know about us? That's my focus now. Okay. One way you get more fans to know about your promotion is to have WD wrestlers on your show. Listen, listen. Does it, this doesn't... Uh, so, Court went to Triple H and said, hey, could you write me a prepared statement in case anybody asks about this? This sounds exactly, exactly. Right now, everything well, in wrestling, this is, this is, everything this is, is fluid. This is non-answer. The biggest, I know, answer. Triple H is the best of that. The biggest goal I have right now is how do I maximize awareness for the company so we're not the best kept secret of the game? And here's the thing, Court. Well, you know, Triple H didn't write it because it doesn't say the the phrase is "I find it funny" or "funny thing is" or not included. So you know, Triple H did not write it. Okay, that's a good point. Uh, I think it's funny. What's the upside and the downside? Yeah, no, it's a good point. Uh, so yeah, of course he's not going to talk about this. You know, you never, especially with WWE, you never talk about if you have stuff going on. I imagine if there is nothing going on, he'd probably say there is nothing going on because why wouldn't he? So seemingly something's going on because he's saying I'm not going to talk about it. So uh, so yeah, and you like know, you said, did. clearly, if you have WWE wrestlers in your product, that's a big deal. Assuming you know he, part of the deal isn't what happened in the United Kingdom where promotion has gotten to deals, deals with Dude. WWE where there was apparently some sort of, we'd heard, an option where WWE could purchase the promotion we yeah, heard that yeah we read about that yeah sure obviously court bauer is not interested in engaging in any sort of deal along those lines yeah he's interested in the continued uh, uh existence and success of mlw and if he were to think i would suppose getting into a deal with wd would in any way jeopardize that he hasn't to do it and rightly so yeah so seemingly part of this you can yeah you can you can extrapolate from this that okay you know, if I do a deal, it's not going to include me giving my company to the WWE or selling my company to the WWE. So that isn't, yeah, that is one item here you can take away. MLW is going to be Court Bauer's thing, and uh, whatever he does is going to be, uh, you know, 
it, it's it's not going to include that. So uh, so yeah, there you go. I'm I'm really interested in this. There's a new episode of Fusion that dropped, I think a day or two ago. So I'm going to check that out later on. Yeah. at some point yeah. this weekend because it's good stuff. Speaking of new, let's talk new promotion, specifically one from Deathmatch Wrestling Legend at Sushi Onita. He's set to launch a new promotion, FMW. E. Whoa. And guess what the E stands for? Explosion. I know that because I'm reading here, but it stands for correct. explosion. Explosion. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, Onita noted in the announcement that he sees a demand for that style of match, explosion matches, in the U.S. Uh, after interest in the Moxley versus Omega death match at AEW Re- at Revolution and aims to start delivering uh, those matches starting July 4th in uh, Yokohama. Of course, uh, uh, there's an episode of Dark Side of the Ring coming up later in the year about the original FMW. Uh, I don't know if if that has anything to do with Odita's uh, desire to kickstart uh, his own organization um, with a lot of explosion, a lot of explosions going on. Uh, but it's entirely possible that when that episode airs later this year, interest in the FMW brand and at Sushi Onita could be pretty darn high so Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um smart of of onita here to uh to get out in front of of uh, some possible buzz around fmw's legacy and get back and and putting on shows i'm pretty excited about this yeah everything everything in the 90s is sort of coming back man so you know uh they've got uh yeah i think this is this is this is really cool i mean i wonder you know I don't know what the situation's like in Japan as compared to here in terms of like, can they do matches? It'll be interesting because so much of the more outlandish stuff that FMW did back in the day is sort of what is on the minds of the people when they think of FMW. I mean, they had some classic actual wrestling matches as well. Um, but, you know, you throw the word explosion into it. Is he looking to get back to, like, batshit crazy stuff? Can you do that these days? I don't know. I don't know that you can, you know, you can light a bunch of shit on fire and uh, and get away with it these days. But maybe you can. Okay. You know, you have a okay. match that happens for two minutes and you have to shut it down. I don't know. But I'm interested, you know. Obviously, the, you know, the, the this is a, yeah, man, this is cool. We'll see. But is it going to be? Like a WWE's relaunch of ECW, or is it going to be something cool? Or is it going to be like AEW's relaunch of WCW? I mean, which has been very successful. So, yeah. remains to be seen. Remains to be seen, but I'm interested in checking it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we watched the NXT UK not that long ago. We have recap. Mm-hmm. Uh, not a wrestling-heavy episode, and partially because uh, this opening bout Cut short due to injury. We were robbed, man. We were robbed of this uh, this match. This would have been a, a really fun match. But, yeah, pretty soon after uh, the opening match, Ilya Dragunov versus uh, the bomber, Dave Mastiff, uh, like maybe five minutes into it. Oh, uh, that, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the ref had to throw up the old X because uh, Ilya uh, got like a forearm or an elbow straight to the face that connected a bit too flush. And uh, he just started, like, you know, blood just started coming down pretty big time. You could tell he was shook up pretty bad, and mm-hmm. uh, the ref called off the match. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after that, we had a, a series of video packages, backstage segments. Uh, we got a Zaya Brookside video package, uh, a little bit with Kenny Williams chatting up Sid Scala in advance of the main event, Talk about how he asked for the stipulation uh, and, and declare that he was winning and staying in NXT UK. We got a Stevie Turner video package. Uh, they did a pretty decent job of capitalizing on what happened in the opening bout. They had an Ilya interview, and they brought it back to his story going on now where he's having self-control issues. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. And uh, he was like, hey, Dave just was trying to help me, and my lack of self-control led to this. There's consequences. Things have to change. Yeah, man, he's got a crisis of confidence these days. Uh, but it has it doesn't have to do with losing necessarily. It's like just winning, but you're a madman when it happens. And mm-hmm. Poor mm-hmm. Dave, you know, he's just trying to help me out. Uh, after that, we had Gallus uh, or two thirds of Gallus playing football backstage, uh, and, you know, soccer to our American friendos out there. Uh, the ball gets away from them. Rampage is around, picks it up, doesn't give it back to Mark Coffee. Wolfgang's with him. He asks, "Hey, where's Joe?" And uh, they're like, "Well, Joe's not here." 
And he's like, but give me that ball back and maybe I'll tell you where it is, says Mark. And then uh, Rampage is like, uh-uh. he throws the ball away. And uh, he's like, uh, Wolfgang's like, yeah, Joe's not here, but I'm here. And Rampage is like, well, we all like to fight. Gallus likes to fight. You're gonna, you, you'll do just fine. And uh, and it pats Wolfgang there. So they're gonna have a match probably next week. Yeah. Uh, Isla Dawn video package, and then we get Supernova sessions with Nathan Frazier. I really do appreciate that they uh, embrace poke fun at the idea of repackaging. They use that word mm-hmm. in this in this uh, edition of Supernova Sessions. The idea of people coming in and then changing their names. I mean, that was Shaw Samuel's whole story when he came in, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was Ed Harvey, and then in his first match, uh, he got on the mic. It was like, "I'm Shaw Samuels. I'm like a legend here in the British Brit rest scene, you know." And they, I come in here and they try to change my name. No, I'm Shaw Samuels, and he wrecked the guy. Um, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, uh, Frazier shows up, and of course, when Ben Carter a.k.a. Nathan Frazier, first showed up in NXT UK. One of the first things he did was he went on Supernova Sessions. That's when Jordan Devlin showed up and he had his first match. And uh, and so the idea here is Noam Dar didn't know that Ben Carter had changed his name. He thought he was getting a different guy. And he's like, well, I don't know what to ask you now. So he asked him a couple of lame questions. Carter sort of explains that he changed his name because, you know, back when he started, he used the name, he changed his name to Ben Carter so that his parents wouldn't know who he was, you know, he would, it was to hide it from his parents, his football coach. He was like, and it just stuck. Now I don't have to hide from anybody. I'm Nathan Frazier, which I don't think that's his actual name. So I'm not sure. But anyways, um, so, uh, so Noam Dar, Shaw, Shaw Samuels calls him a fraud. Basically, Noam says, you know, you couldn't, you couldn't hang with me in a British rules match because Nathan Frazier is talking about coming to the performance center, learning the British style of wrestling, merging it with his own style and, and being pretty happy with it. So uh, 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 Nathan Frazier's like, oh, is that a challenge for a, a Heritage Rules match? And uh, Noam's like, whoa, I didn't say that. And Shaw's like, yeah, it is. There's a challenge for you. And so uh, Shaw sort of accepts that challenge on behalf of Noam Dar. Uh, so that match will be happening who knows when. Yes. Uh, then we get a Ginny video package following that. Amir Jordan is talking with Sid Scala backstage. Then a South Wales subculture video package. <laughs> Uh, this next bit was actually pretty cool. They had Tyler Bate and a kid kind of do like a reaction to their previous two matches and kind of doing some commentary, um, kind of picking apart the psychology of the matches where they lost the matches. Um, uh, it was pretty cool. I like when they did, they did this with EO Shirai and, uh, Beth Phoenix, mm-hmm. not that long mm-hmm. ago in, in, in NFT prime. I thought this was really cool. Yeah, this was really neat. You can see, you know, when, uh, when, uh, uh Tyler Bates watching and he sees, uh, uh, a kid, what was it like? A was it like a DDT or something? I don't know what the move. Yeah, was. it was a DDT. And he was yeah. like, "Well, that moment right there, that's when I lost the match." He was in my head. So yeah, this was really cool stuff. I wish they would do more of this. Uh, after that, we had Saxon Huxley versus Trent Seven. Of course, this is part of Trent Seven. Sam Gradwell poking at him, saying, "Oh, you can't win the big one." So uh, of course, mid match, uh, uh, Gradwell shows up on the Tron, talks some crap to Trent, says, "Yeah." You can't. You still can't get the job done. You can fancy yourself up, but you still can't get it done. And then Trent proceeds to get the job done. He got the win with a dragon sleeper and a seven star lariat over Saxon Huxley. Yeah, uh, we get uh, Amelia McKenzie video package, and then Zaya Brookside is laid out backstage. Uh, and what, her name is Amel. Amel, yes. Amel, yeah. Seems like she's the one that may uh, have laid her out. Of course, Zaya is supposed to be in a gauntlet match next week, I believe, mm-hmm. determine a new number one contender for Kaylee Ray's women's title. And then we get our main event, Kenny Williams versus Amir Jordan. Physical, hard-hitting match. Of course, loser leaves NXT UK. We all thought, you and I thought, Kenny Williams is on his way out 205 Live. Turns out he's staying put, and it's Amir Jordan who is going elsewhere. Uh, Kenny ends up getting the win after hitting his finish on a chair. But a really fun match, physical. It was a really fun match, and yeah, it was like a no DQ, so they did like stuff all over the place. It was mm-hmm, really cool. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And yeah, like you said, kind of a surprising one. We figured Kenny Williams uh, would be moving on to, to greener pastures, but maybe that's Amir Jordan. I mean, I don't, I don't know what he's going to do at this point. Uh, maybe he's going to move to the states. I don't know. Maybe not. 
Maybe he's going to go to progress. I don't know. Maybe he's going to stop wrestling. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, The the ref really seemed to want him out of there, though, at the very end. He was like, they really do enforce those stipulations, but it's a loser leave scenario. It's like, you can't even, you can't even just like soak in the moment at all. You got to go now. Yeah. Uh, Oh, fun times tonight, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Stephen Larson Impact Wrestling. That's right. We're on the road to, well, we're on the road to uh, uh, Under Siege. Yes. Which is also kind of a road bump on the road to Slammiversary. That's the next big one, yeah. which uh, we're going to see if we can maybe get on that plane to Nashville. No promises, but we're working on it. Uh, and so, of course, we're going to be watching Impact tonight. Do we have a preview for Impact, Larson? Of course we do. Steve, get excited. LP, your favorite, making his Impact Wrestling debut tonight. Oh, I'm excited. I hope he brings his loaded boot with him. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, also on the card, Moose. Versus James Storm. I believe this is a qualifier for the uh, under siege bout. Should be, yeah. Uh, Trey Miguel versus Rohit Raju. Uh, Rhino versus Chris Sabin. Susan versus Taylor Wilde. Doc Gallows versus mm. Juice Robinson. Right. And Kira Hogan versus Rachel Ellering. It's a pretty, right. pretty solid card here. Pretty stacked show. Yeah, look at that. No, uh, no tag matches. It's all like a lot of tag yeah. people in singles action. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Right on. Should be a fun episode. We just like, we, you know, we chill, shoot the shit, pay attention to wrestling when it demands. Uh, you know, we always turn up the volume for Steiner math. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Anyways, hopefully you'll join us for that. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We appreciate it till next time. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Help support going in raw today by becoming a friendo club TV member. You'll get access to new bonus episodes every week, including friendo club arcade, Live Power Rank, Vintage 10 for the Wins, and Ask Steven Larson. Get access to Friendo Club TV today by becoming a $5 and up patron at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, by throwing us a sub at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, or by clicking join at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson.